Welcome to PACE TV, I'm Marlene Levitt. Rancho Bernardo is a small community located in North San Diego County. One of the first housing developments in this area was Seven Oaks. Every Thursday afternoon, a dance is held here in the Seven Oaks Clubhouse. The live band plays the kind of music that seniors recognize and enjoy. But what's unique about this band are the musicians. Banjo player, Jim Smith, 97. My banjo life really started when I came down here to Rancho Bernardo. I, I uh, had been here about 32 years, and uh, about 30 of those years I've been playing banjo with, with the orchestra down here. I think I'm the only one, I know I'm the only one who was in the original band, but uh, there have been great changes Every one of them been good musicians. I, I find that the music that I've been playing has been a wonderful addition to my life. I've had uh, so many friends throughout the music business and so many friends who are, have enjoyed the music, dancing and enjoying the music with me. It's been a wonderful part of my life and I've, I've enjoyed every bit of it. I've had uh, I don't think I've missed probably more than uh, uh, maybe one one Thursday of a, a year down at the center, and uh, that's that's pretty good, I think. But I've enjoyed it. That's why I've been down there. Trombone player Warren Hess, 92. I started uh, about 1939 in Pasadena, California, when I joined the Turner Roses Band in Pasadena, which was somewhat, they had a reputation, and it was kind of honored to be in the band because they headed the Turner Roses Parade. In the time of the late 30s and early 40s, you know, during the time of the, of the uh, Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey, Everybody, all young guy who could toot a horn, wanted to get in a band or form a band. Well, in Pasadena, um, I hooked up with a band that had jobs. We played for sororities and, and fraternities and high schools. But one of the things that, that uh, I found interesting that that, that band uh, had a job at the Huntington, Ho Huntington Hotel, which was the posh hotel in Pasadena at that time. Well, we had a job on Friday and Saturday nights for dance groups in the ballroom there. But we, on Friday nights, we paid two hours and got paid three dollars. And on Saturday nights, we played four hours and got five dollars. Well, that made me consider that I don't think I can make a good living playing my horn. I, uh, I love playing the horn. Sometimes you get paid, and sometimes you just do it for the love of playing. Um, for the 20 years that we played at uh, Seven Oaks, we weren't getting paid there at all. Uh, we played there for the enjoyment of playing, and for the enjoyment, we hope we were enjoying the people. A lot of people came there just to listen to the music, not just for dancing. But it's, um, as, as I grow older in life, it gives me really something to look forward to. I get up in the morning, I got something to do. And maybe somebody will enjoy it, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, um, in, uh, as you get on in years, uh, you can sit in your chair, but if you can get up out of bed and think there's something that is gonna be worthwhile to your life and to others, it gives you a lift. And uh, I know I've heard stories that that uh, people who are, who are musicians are not Alzheimer's cases, in a lot of cases. And it's because when you play, you exercise your brain. And when somebody says you're gonna play a certain number, you gotta think, well, I'm gonna be in a certain key, and I've got a certain thing, and I gotta get my head in gear that I'm gonna be playing this song. And uh, it's, it gives you, a, gives you something to work on. It gives something to live for. Thank you.
Drummer, Carl Warren, 81. When I was eight or nine, I, uh, I started playing uh, on my dad's banjo head, and my parents got me a set of drums for Christmas one year. And uh, the kids in the neighborhood uh, all played something, most of them accordion, and this kid came down with his red wagon when the accordion loaded, and we played. And then we started playing for a lot of family things. We played for family events, and the families would come. And then later on, believe it or not, under parental supervision, I'd play in some bars. So I got into the bar scene pretty young, you know, 13, 14 years old. Then in college, I still was playing with different bands around the Cleveland area. And I started playing in a polka band. And we were on television every week, and we recorded, and we had a radio show, and we traveled all over the, the north part of Ohio, and a little bit of Detroit, Chicago, we flew. And so we had a great time playing, met a lot of nice people. And that's what's nice about music, is that people are nice, generally speaking. And then I went into the service, and then that was the end of the music for many, many years, because I spent 22 years in the service. Came out to San Diego, retired, met a co-worker who was a musician, and he invited me to play with his little band. We started talking about music, and so I got another set of drums and uh, started playing Dixieland and other bands, swing bands, and played all over North County and Southern California. Played up at uh, L.A. in the Disneyland Hotel and uh, the... Uh, L.A. Convention Center, played on the Queen Mary, I think it is up there, the ship up there. Played all over San Diego, a lot of different venues, the shopping centers and Seaport Village. And then I retired to the Rancho Bernardo area, and uh, I met the group at the Seven Oaks and started, frankly, I don't remember how, I, I just went down there and, and everyone was playing, Rose was playing. And uh, so I've been with the group about 17, 18 years, long time. And so played with them every Thursday ever since. Well, I just, I just love music. It, it really gets, gets you up. You know, uh, you just can't, especially like polka music and for a jazz musician, a drummer, I like Latin music and, and up-tempo things. And it just lifts you. It just, uh, and sometimes it brings tears. So it's a great thing to have. So I know because when I play music, when I go to my piano is where I put out my feelings. When I was a little girl, I couldn't express myself. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say all the things that were on my mind. So I would go to the piano and I would pour my feelings right through my fingers and it was just the most releasing thing. It was just cathartic. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, and especially playing, you know, drums. I mean, you. I mean, if you have any stress, it when you play drums, it really releases stress. And I must say, there's a, a doctor who lives in uh, my neighborhood, and uh, God bless him, he built a little room in the back of his house. He plays drums, and I can still hear him though across the golf course, but. I know he plays his drums to release the stress of his uh, his uh, profession, and he plays drums, and that and that's the reason I like it. I mean, I not only does it relieve stress, but it's just a joyous thing. And uh, I thank God that I, you know, that music is a part of me. My daughter took me to the blues festival the other day. I'm not really a big blues fan, but I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. And uh, so I like any kind of music, but uh, I, I just love the fact that I can participate in it. You meet other people, and uh, I've met some wonderful people over the years, really have. Uh, my name is Deanna Manley, and I've been a vocalist for the uh, Survivors Band. That's Rose Bailey and the Survivors, actually, uh, since about 2003. Um, I know they had other vocalists before, but I'm the youngster of the group at, in my 60s. Um, and so I pretty much take orders from the older and the wiser of the group. Music 
music to me uh, is an expression of thoughts and emotions from whichever era you, you dig from. So when we're doing music of the 40s, you have to realize that the emotions in the 40s and the feelings of the 40s were all about war, separation, departure, um, pain, loving, longing, and that's the message from the 40s. When you get into the 50s, that music means be Bapalula to me. As a youngster, that's, that's where I um, grew to love rock and roll. And then, of course, I went from there to country. So all the music means something different to me, each era. Being with Rose Bailey and the Survivors has given me insight into what it takes to work as a unit of a band. It's not a solo. Um, there's a little bit of forgiveness because each person can take a solo as they wish or as indicated, but there's a lot of music there. So as singing um, goes, occasionally you have not a good voice day and those are the days that the band and the orchestra picks up the slack and covers for you, but you still sound great. And who exactly is the leader of this unusual band? Well, if you look very carefully, you might see her in back of her very special musical instrument. Her name is Rose Bailey, and this band leader has just celebrated her 97th birthday. Her 97th, just past August, and uh, I never thought I'd make it. I had, I had five sisters, and they're all gone now. I'm the only one left. When I came to uh, Seven Oaks, they asked what I did for a living, and uh, I told them that I was a musician. So they called me and. I, they asked me to be in the band. Little did they know that one day I would be the leader of that band. Uh, Rose came in, uh, I think, about 20, 22 years ago. And uh, she's, she's been down there every week. It just, just she, she never misses. She's been a wonderful part of the band and the leader of the band, you might say. She's been a, a real treasure to me. I've, I've loved Rose, and she's uh, she's something to something to remember. Jim Smith, who you talked to before, uh, he and another fellow, and Rose and I got just got together, and just for free, we went to retirement home and played for the for the amusement of the people there and rose had was a major part of the uh, seven oaks community recreation center there for all that time she was putting on shows and she had she had this thursday afternoon dance group that she was playing the organ with she can play any tune any way any key so she was she was a pro's pro, and so we joined her. We've been now playing in the Seven Oaks Recreation for, for the, the dancers there for over 20 years. The fun thing is playing with Rose because Rose knows every tune that was ever written. I swear. And what's fun about it is we'll come up just off the top of our heads. We don't have any music. And we'll say, well, let's play It Had to Be You or whatever. And Rose will say, what key? And she plays in any, any key, just tell her, you know, she'll feel, not only in her mind does she have a memory for the notes, but she can do it in any, in any key, which for a musician is, is, you know, pretty good. And so that's the enjoyable thing. And the fact that uh, we take these things just, just off the top of our head which at our age is pretty good because you have to go back into your memory and I think that musicians for some reason their memories stay there. I remember I played that one of our piano players was suffering the beginning of dementia with uh, Alzheimer's 
and he would forget where the jobs were and what time the job was, etc. But he never forgot his music. Never. Rose is such an inspiration. Uh, actually, she's the first person that took a chance on me to sing with a live band. I had been singing and I was raised with music and my father had a country band. Country was my lot. And uh, Rose was the first one that gave me uh, an introduction to singing big band or standards. One of the highlights of Rose Bailey's life came with a simple phone call one evening. I was cooking and the phone rang and this man asked me if I wanted to play for President Kennedy at such and such a place. And I turned off the stove, put some decent clothes on, told my kids that to tell their father when I got when he got home that I was playing for President Kennedy. Well, he wasn't president yet, but when he came out on stage, he the people went wild. He was so handsome, and uh, he winked at me. Rose Bailey and her Survivors Band are perfect examples of fabulous seniors doing what they love to do best. Next, let's take a look at another group which has won numerous awards throughout our county, our very own Pace TV. Pace TV, public access cable vision by elders, is the longest running public access television organization in the United States. Founded in 1978, we've been around for over 30 years. We are a nonprofit corporation whose membership consists of senior volunteers aged 50 and over. Our members have produced and presented over 900 award-winning shows of topical interest to the San Diego community. These shows air each week on San Diego's cable networks, Time Warner and Cox. New members have the opportunity to learn all aspects of television production, including the operation of studio equipment, from lighting, camera, and audio position, to directing and producing. No experience in television is required. Our training program allows anyone to master each of the crew positions with a mentor to help along the way. Each week, members work together as a team to do whatever is required to prepare the studio for a show. Most 30-minute shows are produced within two to three hours in the Time Warner studio in Mira Mesa. After the show is completed, the crew again works together to put all the equipment away. The tape is then edited and delivered to Time Warner and Cox for airing on their channel. I so happened to see an ad in a newspaper, and uh, that newspaper said, do you want to learn any about television? And lo and behold, this is why we're here today after how many years now? Would you believe that it's over 20 years that we have been with Pace? And how many shows have we been involved in altogether? Well, you're the one who keeps count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's in the hundreds, of course. And uh, it, it's been such a wonderful road for us. So it is the most enlightening opportunity that we've had to grow and to learn at, at our ages. And this is appropriate for anybody who's that, who in a senior stage can now redirect themselves into a, in an entire new modality. I had a buddy, now deceased, my, our, our dear member Dick Haight, who, uh, with whom I was in a rail, I'm also kind of a train buff, and he and I were in a railroad club. And one day he told me about Pace, and I thought, well, that'll be great. I have a chance now that I'm sort of been slid into retirement since my career was all on film. You know, that was the stuff with the sprocket holes and little frame lines, and we used to run it through green movieolas and chew up, chew up the sprocket holes. But I didn't, even though I worked for a company that made film episode 
filmed uh, dramatic episodes for television, I didn't know much about the television side, the video side. All I, we did a, I did a few video shows. So I joined PACE thinking I'll learn how to do the video side, which happily, thanks to the PACE program where we all learn, we have a mentoring program and a, a uh, uh, training program, and we are certified in various skills, and it has been very beneficial in that regard. I've been a member of PACE TV for about 14 years, and how I got into this is very interesting because a friend of mine took me down here on a, um, on a tour, and when I saw everything, I thought, this is for me. And I did not tell her that I had worked at a studio because the kind of work I did had nothing to do with the crew, with crewing like we do here. Um, the kind of work I did back in, in L.A. was working with producers, directors, and writers. And I was assisting them in all things. But coming here was a different story because this had to do with the physical aspects of crewing. And so everything was a learning experience here. Of course, as a photographer, I always enjoy the camera. And uh, my efforts had always been directed to photography. So camera, it, to me, is an important issue here. And uh, uh, that's where I really make my mark, I believe. When we walked into Pace, I was directed up to the control room and started with the VTR. That's a videotape recorder. And I thought that we would just learn about video production. And I remained at that post for a while and then just moved on to other things in the control room. And then one day when we had our business meeting and nobody had an idea for another show, I said, you know, I'm taking a mini toast, uh, storytelling class. And I think I could get the teacher to come and tell us about it. They said, that's great. So you can be the host. I said, what? I never thought of being in front of the camera. And then they said, you can also produce it. So that was what I did from the beginning. And of course, my favorite position is hosting. I love to do that. And it's something that is so challenging for the brain. It keeps that gray matter going. I've always loved camera, and that was always my first love. And then my dad was an editor and a producer, and I was in, in editorial. So camera and editing, really, uh, although it's kind of fun to sit back there with uh, all these professional type people we have here and watch the little dials jump on the, all the monitors and all the stuff in the control room. It's kind of fun. But if I had to do one, it would be camera, I guess. You know, the position I like the best probably is producing. I like putting all the pieces together and seeing how it all comes together and working. I love every aspect of television. I think it's the most fantastic medium. And it's a chance for me to put together my own skills and my own whatever talents I have and put it into it. And I just love producing. Uh, we do interesting shows. Uh, some more than others. My personal uh, favorite thing to do is to get out of the studio a lot and get location stuff. Well, one of my favorite shows was is really close to my heart because after some years of hosting and being a member here, I thought I would love to do a series focused on youth. And for my first program, I had a 16-year-old student of a local high school who came and played the violin. He was a virtuoso. I remember now, I had to really fight back the tears when he played the score from Sindler's List. That was so touching. And it started me on becoming very much aware of today's youth and something that we love to do. Well, I remember one of the first shows that that uh, I remember when I first got in the group is we did a show on the, uh, the Midway, the, the aircraft carrier. It was an inspiration because we had studio work and location work and uh, stock footage that we used. We did a show here, uh, uh, the Tango show, 
with interesting lighting and, and music. And we have a, s a series now we do with a cooking show, which is also very interesting. I did a show out in the field uh, on the um, origin of the Levenheim, which was really interesting because it showed all the artifacts from the 1800s in several barns. And we dealt with that and animals. We dealt with the, the history of how a Levenheim came to be. So that was one of my favorites. And uh, we've, I've done shows on foundries, shows on glassmakers, Habitat for Humanity, so many different things. Challenged America, which taught, uh, which teaches um, the uh, physically challenged how to sail. That was very interesting. And uh, many shows in the studio also. Pace to me is a, it's a family first. Um, we all work together so well. And it's, it's a chance to challenge yourself all the time because no matter what you've learned in the past, you can redo those skills and l learn new, new ways of doing it. And also new equipment comes out all the time. So you have to relearn that. And it's interaction with people. And you're, you're really working like an oiled machine, a well-oiled machine. And uh, I just love Pace TV. It's a great group of people who all work together. We all trade off different positions uh, on the crew. And uh, even though we are not professional in that we make a lot of money, which we all deserve, uh, we are professional in the way we do the job. And we put out a good, a good product, I think. If you'd like to find out more about joining our group here at Pace TV, please go to our website, www.pace-tv.com. It is never too late to have fun learning a new skill. Thanks for tuning in.